of the greatest city in the universe. It's all night with Joey Reynolds. And speaking with his voice. Our guest tonight. Hey. Comedian, singer, actor, writer, producer, and Renaissance man, Rick Younger. American Culinary Federation Chef of the Year, Chef Melody. Musical guests with their tribute to Cretan's Fortunate Son. From True TV, crime commentator Albert Wunsch. Musical guest and back to sanity Southern style, Riley Etheridge Jr. Plus, from the Metropolitan Room singer, Tonya Byrne Campbell. And now, the guy who thinks he replaced Microsoft's Bill Gates as the world's richest man, Joey Reynolds. Oh, hi, Jay. Uh, you don't say CBS FM anymore, so well, I guess uh, yeah. th you didn't lose the job while no, you were here. No, no, it's just I... They, they, they decided to keep you, did they? I, that's from what I know, yeah. Yeah, I know, because you know you were plugging them, and you know, NBC and CBS really used to be enemies. Well, yeah, but it's old. I mean, you know, in the, well, no, it is old because now that NBC is going to be carrying 60 Minutes right. on the reruns. That's what I mean. And I think that uh, pretty soon you'll be seeing Saturday Night Live on CBS. Or on ABC. Never you know. <laughs> <laughs> not, not when a franchise is working. No, no. You know, when it doesn't work, they dump it on at midnight. Oh, wait a minute. That's when we're on. No, they put it on Channel 11. <laughs> I don't know if it's good. <laughs> Well, I was busy today. I spent the whole day building a web for Spider-Man. Is that right? Yeah. A web a for Spider-Man. Spider I got it, yes. <laughs> no, you know, I went to see the show. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's a Broadway musical that's controversial because people have been paying a lot of money to see something that they would ordinarily see at the Indy 500. A car hit a wall <laughs> or, uh, or, you know, something, something that, that really has an accident. You know, people are really so... Uh, you know, we're dark. We're dark. Yeah, it's not new. This mm -hmm. is in the Roman Empire. You know, they used to kill Christians. I shouldn't say this on Ash Wednesday night or Thursday. You know, I mean, whenever you're watching the show. But it's the Holy Days. You know, it's the beginning of the Holy Days. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I noticed walking around New York that a lot of people have ashes. So I took a cigarette. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I really, I, instead of going to church, I, I really should have. But, yeah. I, you know, and I, and I didn't realize it until I got in to see Spider-Man, and I realized this is my place of worship. For $140, you know, you better, <laughs> this is church. That's the collection. <laughs> it's a collection. They're definitely, they ought to, they're going to take one up, you know, because they're going to retool the show. They are going to retool it. I've got a weeks. souvenir from the show. You know, most people buy a T-shirt. Yeah. You know, and they, maybe if you've got a kid, you maybe want to take one of the toys home. They've got a big toy shop uh -huh. over there at the, at the theater on 42nd it's Street. merchandising. And, you know, I mean, so, so if you're going to take something home from, from seeing Spider-Man, there's uh, CDs, you know, with Bono and uh, U2 and the music from right, it, right. which is original and, and great songs. Or maybe the DVD of the, uh, of, of the performances. Or a t-shirt. There's things you would take. Whatever. So you know what I brought home? What? My souvenir really? here. I brought Spider-Man. Get out of here. I, well, wow. if you're going to get a souvenir, you may as well get something that's <laughs> organic. That's a real thing. <laughs> something that's... Now, this is something that you want to take home to your kids. Right? You're going to bring, never mind the, the linens, you know, or the pillows or right. the pillowcases. Just take Spider-Man home. Now, when, if you go to see him and you take him home to your kid, <laughs> you imagine what's going to happen? Oh, please. Uh, well, you know, Spider-Man is a comic book character. Yeah. And written by Stan Lee, to mm -hmm. begin with, who is an old-timer that's done very well. The movie, of course, is sensational, and now it's a Broadway show. And, the, and I loved it. I really liked the show. Now, what they're doing, they want to they they do like they do with this show. You know, as soon as this thing started taking off, this, our show, the one you're on right now, NBC wanted to fix it. You know, nobody ever wants to leave anything alone when it's good. They want to screw around with it when it's good. Spider-Man doesn't need any retooling. What needs retooling is this, those critics. I was going to call them a name, but, you know, I got bleeped on the other one last <laughs> night. <laughs> but what, what needs to be retooled is the thinking of the theater crowd. You know, they want something very elegant. Let me tell you what's good about Spider-Man, besides Spider-Man himself, you know, legendary hero. Uh, and we have him here tonight because I want him to kick Curtis Lee was ass. <laughs> That's why we have him here. <laughs> but here, here's, the, here's the whole bit. When you are in theater, in Broadway theater, uh, the rich, Broadway's for rich people. Six, seven rows of seats, 100 bucks, 150 dollars. Then you sit in the orchestra and you can watch the watch the show the way you're supposed to. 
we are the people that, if you see Dame Edna, we are those pigeons that are up in the third balcony up there, you know. Uh, oh, hello, possum. How are you, possum? You know, the people way up who get ignored. Right. Now, in Spider-Man, since they fly through the theater, the best seat in the house is in, you know, Upstairs. up there in the loge. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a rich man's sport, as a rule, to go to theater, but not Spider-Man. Right. The poorer guy does better. Right. You got this guy in your lap. There you go. When you're, when you're watching it on the third balcony. <laughs> there you go. Literally. So it's, 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 it's Cirque du Soleil with a little, a little more attitude. Yeah. And some, uh, some pretty people are in it, you know. I mean, there's a cast of 40 people. Now, very much like this show, the producers are nervous about paying this kind of payroll every day because they have a large cast. They are making money because the accident made it popular, and then another accident made it even more popular. They sold a lot of tickets. They it didn't want to get reviewed. It got a buzz. And, and the show got to be very popular in an organic fashion. Mm -hmm by word of mouth, people saying, oh, you know, I like it, or let's go see it anyway. And that got very, very, it, it made them money. But not enough to satisfy these hungry wolves that are beating at the door of success. You know, they are, they're, they're waiting for big profits. Mm -hmm. And when you have a cast of 40 people, you know, somebody's gonna come in here and do what they do with the government, which is what? Cut budget. They're gonna cut, they're gonna start <laughs> to cut jobs, that's right. So the entire cast of Spider-Man is going to Wisconsin. <laughs> You're going to see With them no marching. binding arbitration. No, no, no arbitration at all. But isn't it true? How they're not making enough money? See, they, everybody does everything for money. Nobody does anything. This is the only guy here who is uh, he is working free. He stands outside in front of our window and does not have a cup. There's no pockets. Well, there. Well, I guess there's room. <laughs> there is a little room for, for improvement here. But you know, uh, uh, there, there's there's nobody. The naked cowboy has a pouch. Where? Well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> the naked cowboy has a place for for money. <laughs> so when you're standing outside here and you and you see Spider-Man, go over and give him give him a buck. You know, give him a little money because because he's a crime fighter. Yeah. And it's, it's wonderful that you actually stopped by tonight. Now, you know, I went, I went outside, and I took the, we took our camera outside tonight, and we followed, uh, the, we followed the stream. Yeah. Now, oh, yeah, one last thing. We didn't mention on the credits. You know who's on the show tonight? Who's that? Speaking of fighters, yeah. John Duddy is here. Ooh. You didn't mention his name. No, because he's not. John Duddy a... is a world-class fighter. Yes. And he, is a, he has a, a great following, including mm -hmm. me. I mm -hmm. think he's the best, most exciting fighter we got out there right now. So we're going to bring John out in a little bit. And you better watch it with that guy, because he's Irish and tough. And it's coming up on, on St. Patrick's Day, you know. I would love to see that match. Yeah. You know, that would, all that money that Don King hid in his hair, <laughs> he would have to take it out of there. You know, the money he stole from <laughs> and Tyson. And fork it over. <laughs> hey, Tyson's gotten articulate. Did you see that? Yeah. He's, well, he's semi. going around now. All of a sudden, he's talking right. Yeah, semi. You know, I think he ought to go on the road with uh, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> 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 they, could, they could do a two-man act of people who have it right. All right, now anyway, we went outside and here's what we did. Roll it. Welcome to Nature's Refrigerator, New York. Hey, listen, look at the sign over there. See where it says on the, on the corner building? I don't know if you can flash around. It says, let it snow. We don't mean it. <laughs> I feel, I, I, I'm telling you, Pat Sajak got his start this way. So did David Letterman. They were weathermen. And uh, who else? Willard Scott? I don't want to be a weatherman. The hell with the weather. I hate it. All right, and, and this is the longest winter in history, but I, I like the people, kind of. Hi, folks. Come in. This is the gentleman from straight from Toledo, go. Ohio, I was telling you about. You Joey you Reynolds. Right. Joey night. Reynolds, how you doing? Taylor Man, you? Taylor Man, Taylor Man, recording artist, film director coming out of Toledo, Ohio. Everybody's a film director. You got an iPhone? Uh, yeah. Then you're a film director. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. Uh, so what are you doing here? Uh, well, I'm out here pushing my new single, Mail Time, off the new album, Determination to Maintain. It's not quite released yet, but I just released a uh, new single, Mail Time, on iTunes. So everybody like the joint? It's on What's iTunes. Mail Time? Mail Time. Mail Time. Yeah. Mail Time. Mail Time. Yeah. Oh, Mail Time. Mail Time. Oh, I'm, mail time. I'm Chef Melody. It could be mail time. We could we could switch I'm it up. I'm from Hollywood. I was born in Hollywood, Hollywood? California. Oh, okay, okay. I'm okay. a valley girl. Oh. <laughs> mail time. <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on television because you oh, all are coordinated yeah. and beautiful. Ah, 
Good luck. Why not? Why not? Why not? Where are you what from? Are you tasting? We're Ireland. from Dublin, Ireland. Yeah. Oh, well, this is Irish. You're from Dublin. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is Rub. Wait, wait. That's not an Irish name for this bread, though. They have What's soda bread. bread. What's How about Old Schlager? Old Rubschlager. Old Rubschlager? Yes. All right, so this, I have a, I, first of all, I have a TV show over here in this window. It's called All Night with Joey Reynolds, all right? Uh, are you Joey? I'm Joey, yeah. And we're handing out the sandwiches because we want to make friends with girls from Dublin who are beautiful. Oh, well, isn't that sweet? And well, guess what? They don't look very appetizing. Oh, they don't? <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> are they tasty? Oh, they're very tasty. They're open face. Oh, those. No, open face. Open face. Open face. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they don't have another piece of bread on them. Oh, God, so you don't have to have all the The only thing for free in Times Square. Oh, different thing. <laughs> Hi, girls. Hello, girls. We're giving out we're giving out samples of, of something. This is a Rubschlager Reuben with Swiss cheese and um, corned beef on a, a rye piece of um, Rubschlager cocktail rye. Because St. Patrick's Day, you know, is in next week. Mm -hmm. And this Saturday is my parade in Morristown, New Jersey. OK. okay. So have is that a sandwich. A good enough commercial like going to Costco, right? <laughs> It's uh, corned beef with um. What's that cheese? cheap? We have what Irish stew. Would try. you like? Are you gonna try it? Oh, no, we'll try Maybe it. they want to okay, use the okay. napkin for something. No, I think we can okay. go for it. Now, yeah. Helen, tell us the honest to God okay, truth. Okay. Is it like the cheddar or cork? <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Can you imagine Swiss. going out to dinner with Swiss. These guys? Is it like the Swiss? Is this amazing? From County Dublin, like Fingal area. <laughs> don't be silly. The Irish don't like the Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do. We do. Yeah, we do. Go. Well, you love everybody, right? Yes, I always yes. love everybody. So St. Patrick's Day. Is it delightful? Mm. Yeah. Oh, nice. lovely. Very now, nice. now, I could tell that you are not Catholic. How? Oh. But you're eating meat, and it's it's Lent. Oh, oh yeah, we only gave up chocolate. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I'll tell you what That's I did it. that was Irish today. I saw Spider-Man. Oh. With Bono's music. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. So that was nice. my Irish thing. Well, that was good. It was good, yeah. Yes, I liked it very much. No, no, no. Absolutely not. not. <laughs> I'm going to skip because I'm a vegetarian. Not just for tonight. This is not a, com <laughs> not a commercial. Yeah. She's making it one. And if you come, oh, come back on, Ma. Later, if you come back later, we'll give you a All right, Ma, you handed yeah. out well, the no, All right, that's it. Go okay. home. Even though we gave it up, we let Let's see. This guy looks like he doesn't want to talk to anybody. Let's let's bother him. I like that kind. All right. What do you do? I work for a um, gentleman's club. A gentleman's called what? It's called Cheetahs. Anybody who's running around at that club and is married is a what? A cheetah. Cheater. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're, we're handing out sandwiches to yes. poor and homeless. Okay. Are you poor and homeless? We're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hungry, how about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's do that. Be good, please have a sandwich. All right. What's your name? Megan. And what's yours? Purity. Good oh, to nice know to you. Now have you. a sandwich. Thank you. You. you work in the Thank city? You. No, no, visiting. Where are you from? From Colorado. Put that sandwich back. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? What kind of work do you do? Well. Go ahead. Come on, tell us. Do you really want to know? Yeah. Uh, I'm a school teacher. And what do you do? <laughs> I work for the local county council in the environment division. Good. Uh, you know, I wish I'd had you in school <laughs> instead of the nuns. Oh yes, I'm a nun. On I my part time, three oh, days no. a week. I've just been left. <laughs> I've just been reduced to three days a week. Well, I had I had an Irish nun. <laughs> was she nice? Was no. she nice? Uh, I bet she, you she was sweet underneath it all. Was, what do you do? Come on over here. You're hiding. What, do I do? what kind of work do you do? <laughs> Come on. She's collapsed the banks. <laughs> I work in the banking industry. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, there's a wonderful That's Irish true. saying about being held in the in God's hand. And may the wind hit you in the back of the head while God is holding you in his hand. Is that how it goes? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. You know, the day that while God the Irish eyes are smiling at you. No, that's another thing. But the that's day that God holds life. me in his hand will be the day that he decides to do push-ups. <laughs> I'll be in real trouble. It's an old thing. But you are beautiful. It's good. It's good. Thank you for coming here okay, today. Okay, and nice to meet you. And, and this weather is your kind of weather. It sure yeah. is. We're used to it. We yeah. feel it's fairly hot here at the moment. <laughs> We're been, used to it's it. It's been nice fun. To meet you. Thank you. Is the all sandwich right. all right? Yes. Stop <laughs> back tomorrow. We have soup. All right. Thank you. <laughs> bye it's bye. Like the and who do we see over here? Hey, did I run into the director of the show? Well, let's put him on the air. You're bringing in your own food? I had to go get my own stuff. No, no, because we are being fed tonight. I know, but when is that going to be Myra, ready? What's the name of that company that, that's giving us this food tonight? 
Gruder Bakers. Rubber Sluggers. When's so it going to be ready? It's ready now. They're bringing it outside. Well, I'm going to be inside directing the show, so how am I supposed to eat? Go I'm working. Working. Who's directing it now? Is it on autopilot? It is. Right now it's on autopilot. Oh, oh, oh actually see. Steve's doing it. Oh, we're on Steve-O time. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to go have my calzone oh. by Bella Vita's. <laughs> uh, give us some money and we'll uh, we'll advertise a little more. No, you don't it. need any money. You you already got enough money oh, to buy Starbucks. You must be rich. So uh, where do you live in Colorado? In Denver. Oh, I worked in Denver. Did you know that? You didn't know no, that I was I on KOA. Know that. And I was on Channel oh, 4, okay, oh, KCNC, okay. which was KOA Radio and Television. Awesome. I had a show that was on all night, and it was on radio and television. Okay. And now it's over here at NBC in New York. It's on, guess what, all night. <laughs> <laughs> I never got Good. better hours. <laughs> but I started in Denver. You were, you were too young. <laughs> it's a long time ago in a galaxy far away. Bill. Never losing a moment. <laughs> I have one of those princely bald spots. I have a few, too. The prince has a bald spot. Yeah, that's all right. So it's okay now. It's acceptable because yes. if royalty has it, then it's okay. Clearly. Yes. Now, oh, the only prince you care about is the one that dances in Minneapolis. <laughs> What happened to him anyway? That he did the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, but I mean, you know, he's it, 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 if the record industry has imploded, as you know. Yeah. As we've had well, many discussions about. Well, he could still perform. Oh, he right? does still perform. He know. used to dance around like Mick Jagger and his wife sings. I think you know? Prince is a great entertainer. Well, he is. I mean, well, they're all very entertaining yeah. to watch, but mm -hmm. so are drag queens, yeah. you know. And his songs were pretty good. No, he's good. He's yeah. good. Song. Purple Rain. Purple Rain was a great record. I like that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I was forced to play it without getting any payola. Yeah, <laughs> you were forced <laughs> to play it. <laughs> hey, we got Rick Younger here tonight. Oh, he's funny. And we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Rick Younger, who has uh, got his son with him tonight. Does he bring his son much? <laughs> <laughs> that would be much younger. We'll be right you back. Standing here with the amazing Spider-Man to prove to everyone that I am not Spider-Man. I know people are like, Rick, you, you come across as a superhero, yes, and I do have superpowers, but I'm not Spider-Man, but I do have Spidey senses, and my Spidey senses are telling me that this show is going to be great, because I'm about to come on and, uh, you know, show you my superpowers. That's right. My superpowers, I have a great sense of smell and hearing. I think somebody's cooking with garlic. celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. It's where Cat Greenleaf gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Damn, it's something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Live should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champion. Oh, I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm a grandma. I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I'm an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night. 
a helping hand. The characters of New York. The spirit of New York, told our way. LX New York, weekdays at five. We're all over town. Why do I always feel like we're on ESPN with this desk? You know, the camera sweeps in and all of a sudden we look like we're going to talk sports or something. Tonight, Mookie Wilson's batting average. <laughs> Wait, Mookie Wilson? Where did I get that from? Uh, <laughs> uh, here's Rick Younger now. Rick is coming out for the first time. Here he is, tonight. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's a superhero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joey, on, Rick. Joey, how are you? It's wonderful to have you. It's always good to be here. Where's your son? He's, uh... He should be home in bed. He usually rides with me. He drops me off. He drops. He drives. <laughs> he's drives two me years old. <laughs> hey, he's, a, he's a superhero in the making. So. Well, I know yeah. the mayor gave him his own lane, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got a bus lane, a bike lane, and Lois Lane. <laughs> no, I, I got a little surprise for you tonight. I, I know surprise? you usually surprise me by trying to take over the show, and you have your own logo <laughs> cup. Well, tonight I you're have not a few wearing it. With me, oh, but here we yeah. go. Of course we do. The Rick Younger the, yeah. postcards. Well, you know, because the show is coming up April 17th. What show? The Rick Younger Show, April 17th. This is, is not the Rick Lounge. Younger Show. No, this isn't. I'm saying I have an actual Rick Younger Show, so people don't think that it's a fictitious thing that I made up. Why it's don't I come over there show. and take it over like you I think to you do should. Here. Why don't you come be my guest? Everybody, Joey's coming to be my guest at the next Rick Younger Show, April 17th at the Parkside Lounge. Thank That's you, way Joey. off, though. I mean, you're promoting it too early in I'm, a way. I'm just, I'm living it, man. I'm not, you know, just, just let people know as soon as I know. When we, when we <laughs> expand the franchise of the show, you know, it, we have to kind of change the name for New York nonstop because it's going to be on all over, all over the country. Right, right. Although New York is Well, country. yeah, everybody knows the city yeah. that never sleeps. I mean, I, I, it's like changing the name of Times Square. Yeah. Uh, but we, we want to put the show on, you know, on all the other nonstop stations they have. Okay. And you're kind of holding us back. How so? Well, because, you know, you're not a big name. I'm not? And no. I thought I was... And, you know, I need, a, I need a big name to push us, so I had to go and get Should someone... I, I can use my full name. But I need someone who's, who's black, maybe, you know, because I need that, right. that audience. Yeah, so right. we got to have it's, black It's bigger black guys than me? Well, we got to have somebody <laughs> who's got a bigger name. Than who? Me. Who? I, I, there aren't too many. Yeah, I know. So I went to see Oprah. <laughs> All right, she got me beat. Doesn't get any bigger. <laughs> she wins. <laughs> it's a short name, but a big name. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, I got a little surprise for you because, you know, we're always joking back and forth right, about, right. about the industry and how, yes, how the yes. color barrier has really prevented people from working uh -huh. sometimes. Sometimes. And, and in that issue, you know, uh, I made friends with Oprah, you know. Yes, okay. Years, not because of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's always but, good to have black friends, though, you know. What well, the neighborhood you're from is, is Washington, D.C. Yeah. And, you know, your family, Virginia, Washington. I've, well, I'm Baltimore. originally from Baltimore, and I started performing in Washington, D.C. So oh. I consider that whole Baltimore, Washington area is like my home area. And Baltimore is the home of Oprah's show. It's where beginning she, right, show, right. the first yeah. show yes. with Richard. She was on People Are Talking with Richard. Right. Share. And that show was produced by uh, a woman who produced my show in Miami. Okay. And, and she put Oprah on television in Baltimore. Uh -huh. I think WJZ. I, yes, WJZ. And then 13. years later, she was at WLS TV in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And she put me on the air in Miami on Channel 10 with a daily talk show. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, she thought since she was the producer of Oprah's show and she put my show on, that Oprah and I should meet. And we should sit down and talk. And, and we did. Mm -hmm. Now, you know I have a tape of that. Oh, yeah. Now, we look a little different. <laughs> this think? is back when Oprah had her fro? Was yeah, it? Probably. No, I, 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 this is... Uh, she, she had the, the, the... I mean, her fro was impeccable. I mean, it, wow. was, yeah. it was like... I mean, not a hair was out of place. She, when did you it. get rid of yours? You know, I never really had a good fro. You know, when I was... No. You know, fros were big when I was a kid. And I had, like... My hair is, you know, was so... Like, when I would get a fro, it would be so... It would kind of be like a see-through bush. <laughs> Uh -huh. You know, so it's like, <laughs> hey, you know, wind would blow my, you know, my... You know, in the last the administration, everybody could see through Bush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to play uh, the, the Oprah thing here. Please. I don't know no. if you want to see this. No, I want to see this. What would you think I would talk to Oprah about? Uh, mm -hmm. You 
you were you were being a prophet, and you said many years from now, a man named Rick Younger will come my way, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's going to take over. Now, what do you yeah. think Oprah would want to do with me? <laughs> that's a loaded question. Yeah, I know. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> did she want to make love with you, Joey? I don't oh, know. No, no, no. <laughs> But what, what do you think? I mean, she wanted to, she wanted to, um, to, you know, borrow some records from your record collection. Uh, you yeah, know, like I have know. a record collection. I <laughs> threw them out. <laughs> All right, so, you know, years ago, we got together, Oprah and I. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I just, what do you have in your head? I, I, I know you have a good imagination. I just wonder what you think it you would know, be like before I You know, every week we talk this. about food. So yeah. is it food related? Did y'all? That would be uh, did, a, a little bit of a... Kind of. This is like, what's my line? Yeah, there's a. Remember that show? <laughs> it's a bigger than the bread box. Is yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you think we would have in common? Uh, the news. No, not the news. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no, okay. no, it's not you, money. Would you, would you think of us as being together? Do you think it would I be? Wouldn't, I wouldn't. You know, I'm, I. I would never. Like thought I said, money. It ain't money. It's not it's money. Not money. It ain't money. <laughs> And so what, what do you think? It's not food and it's not money. No. What, what do, you, do, you, do you think it would be a good meeting, though? I mean, do you think, I think it would be we would get meeting. along? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you two are very, both very nice people who, you know, bring all kinds of people together. You know, do you think I could get her to kiss me? Oh, that, then I, I, need, I need proof of that. On the lips? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, man, don't mess it up, man. <laughs> You're teasing me. You got something for me? Dude? I want to show you what it was like when we had our awkward first date. When Harry date. met Sally, when Oprah met when this is our, our first. You roll the tape, you guys. Come on, let's show Rick and, uh, and the world what happened with when Oprah met Sally or Joey. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose everybody knows who you are. But they know who I am. That's who it is. I'm Joey Reynolds, folks. <laughs> Uh, Oprah, I had, uh, I, I was on your show last year. Yeah, I remember. And you and I never talked about something really important because we were talking about shock radio or some one of yeah. those great subjects, you know. And I lost about 150 pounds. And, uh, no, I'm serious. They're looking at me like that. No, uh, I know. Years I know. ago. Yeah. And uh, people who meet me now don't think that I was ever, ever right. white. Because you, you look like you're, you were born this way. Yeah. So I just carry my fat around in this little bag, so <laughs> got to play with it and remind myself. No, I have a, a real uh, admiration for you this year, like everybody. I mean, you know, we've all gone through the fat thing with oh, you, it's, right? It's, it's we've, we've lived through that with you. I'm just trying to figure out what this is. It looks like it was a balloon, but... It's a promotional piece from this uh, NAFTA convention, you know. It's one oh, of those bags wow. filled with, uh, well, sand. Oh, I like this. Isn't that nice? This is a good one. You get all it's kinds of exercise. gook here, but this is good. Yeah. This is, oh, look. <laughs> this is great. I knew inside of you there was a whoopee. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I saw you last night at the Temptations. Well, that was a dinner party. The Temptations performed. Yeah. And you tried to be a member of the group. I know. But you know what? I, like everybody else, Joey, I have this, this, everybody wishes they could be something they were not. And yeah. I wish that I could just, for just for a day, I could have a voice and I could be a rock star. I mean, yeah. the the thrill of being up on stage and kind of singing with the mic and kind of talking into the mic, you know. Okay, well, okay. first of all, you have to act like, you got to be like a eunuch. Yeah. You know, and from Philly. Oh, I know. You got to everybody's sing. a Philly, Just yeah. Just do this, follow after me, all right? Uh-huh. All right. <coughs> I got sunshine. I got sunshine. Now, a little more vibrato. Oh, sunshine. Sunshine. No, you, you better stay white. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're gonna make it. <laughs> gotta have some soul. You know? I know. I got sunshine. I know. I have this limited time with you because we're at a convention and you've been moved booth to booth like Charles I know. Manson. I you know. know. Well, They're not quite like Charles Manson. Well, there's more luxury here. Less actually. <laughs> and you're doing all these all these interviews and you're on the road and you're working feverishly, and I know inside of you. I just know it. There's a great, great sense of humor. Because we know you as a serious actress. We know you as being a wonderful host and all that business. Mm -hmm. But I want to know your favorite kind of joke? You know, I mean, what do you think is funny? Um, my favorite joke of all times is a joke about, um, uh, about a big mouth frog. A big, <laughs> a big mouth frog who went to Mrs. Lion and said, hey, Mrs. Lion, what do you feed your babies? And Mrs. Lion said, oh, well, listen, I go through the woods and I find whatever I can. And she goes to Mrs. Elephant and says, hey, Mrs. Elephant, what do you feed your babies? And Mrs. Elephant says, well, I reach up in the trees. And then she goes to, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, 
Oh, I sound like you're Eunice Schreiber, who tells the worst jokes in the world. <laughs> uh, so she goes to Ms. Alligator and says, what do you feed your baby? And, and he says, big mouth frogs. And the big mouth frog says, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite joke. I've been telling this. They're giving me the rap. I'm already done with you. No, well, okay, take another minute. I'll see you next uh, year. I'm the boss here. Go ahead. No, look, see what it, they're saying no over here. They're going to throw me off camera. All right? Oh, she's the boss here. Forget yes, that. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, it's been nice seeing you We're again. We're out of here. Good seeing you again, too. I love you. No. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so? That's funny. That was great, man. Now, so that, it's it, never made television. Well, and, and now you and I, remember I told you my Oprah story. I met her when I was a kid. She came to my church and she spoke and I went and but, met her. So you and I, once again, another yeah, we connection. have something in common. Something in common. Yeah. Except you didn't get her to sing gospel. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Right, now, I'm sorry. Uh, just a little bit. Just show a little of this. I want to show you the kiss because it, 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 it got into Vanna White. Now, you know, there's a little thing I did with Vanna White, but I just want to show you to show you the kiss that I had from Oprah, which is on the cheek. I think you guys, can you roll a little of that just to show, Rick? You don't have to run the whole piece. For there some you go. reason, we never met. But you probably noticed something unusual about me. Yes, what probably. Is it? I know many unusual things about you, and we've just met. Yeah. No. Did you see the lipstick kiss? I, I couldn't help but notice that. Who uh, gave you that? Oprah Winfrey. You know, I recognize those lips. Do you notice there's space on the other side? Oh, no, 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 no. How's this? Ready? No, no. you got to put lipstick on here. I have to walk out of the sea. We're in these little booths. Right? I know we are. And what is it? They're moving you from booth look, to booth. Look, look. I have a lipstick over here. Look. No, no. You've got to you lay up. one on me. Come on, Vanna. I, I'm too shy for that. Shy? I'm too shy. Yes, I'm a You're shy You're not going to give me one of these kisses? I can't. Well, I can get this from Pat Sajak. If I, if I gave you one, I'd have to give all those other people out there one. Uh, you are a Southern girl, aren't you? Mm-hmm. You have that dignity and that pride. <laughs> yes. And also the big bucks. Well, <laughs> the Southern girls have big bucks? Well, some of them do. Teeth, usually. <laughs> No, you know, it's, it's that moonshine and inbreeding. It really does a job on you. I mean, I knew this lesbian art teacher in Hartford. Oh, I guess you don't want to hear about her. Hmm. But you're not going to lay this on me, huh? I'm too shy. Come on. I'm too shy. Please? I, I did like this and I touched it. There's lipstick there. Well, Believe see, I'm, me, I'm but see, it's unique. See, the other's so obvious. You have lip prints, but over here you have just a kiss from the finger right to the cheek. And, uh -huh. it's, and it's very vivid. My fingerprint right on his cheek. Well, I'm going to walk out of this room. And this is <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to show you that I had I gotten a kiss from Oprah. Now, you didn't get that. You can't prove it, though. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like it's we, we it's just saw, we saw lip prints. Yeah, but that's, that's now, come on, now, you got to admit that no one would do this on a television show. Yeah. On their, they would not be showing <laughs> them when they look better. <laughs> 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 no, you look good now, man. I like you. I like you better now. Oh, see, now, yeah. now you're just sucking you're up. Now you do, want, you do want me to come to the Rick Younger show. No, I like yeah. the hairstyle. I like the hair now. Thank you. Yeah, it was yeah. closer to yours. <laughs> I got a nap. Oh, I shouldn't be going there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Oh, see, God. You know what? Don't don't worry about it. It's no, like, I ain't well, you, about you can no. say nappy. No. You, you know what everybody's on. He didn't say nappy. He said nap. Yeah, yeah. I said I need a nap. That's what it was. Right, right. Calm down. Right? Yeah, and, I hey, will. and as long as I'm not offended. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not how it works. You notice how everybody's so touchy about everything. It's not just yeah. that anymore. I mean, that's way long gone. <laughs> but they're, t uh, they're, they're Look, trying to find fault with everybody. Well, there's Reverend Al. Now, I'll tell you something that's going on. <laughs> Sorry. I want to bring this up, Rick, because you're, uh, you're, you're computer literate and you're, uh, okay. and you're a comic, and you know, you got to stay, you got to stay smart and ahead of the game. All right. Now, what, there's a guy that started a company called Anonymous. Mm -hmm. You hear about this? No. And what they do is they bust people's chops. They, they uh, take their electronics and they, and they gun after them mm -hmm. and ruin their lives. Mm. And they've done it. It's been on the network news, you know, mm. with, with Brian Williams. You know, he was showing it last night. Okay. They are unbelievable with, uh, with trying to ruin people with this Internet stuff. You know, people are, have access to all kinds of right, things right. now because there are games available in that we are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. With Wi-Fi, people right, can right. pick up your signal. That's a whole other game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're, we're really in an electronic war sometimes with, uh, with people who can't have what they want, so they're going to take yours. Well, you know, that's one of the things I love about being a comedian. You, you kind of have the ability to speak and say things the way you feel. And it's like, even if people don't like it, it's like, hey, you know, this is what I do. This is who I am. It's like almost, it's 
it's we 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 are the we are the one group of people that kind of have have a free pass. It's like, hey, if you have a problem with it, come to the show and we'll talk about it even more. <laughs> where it's totally <laughs> uncensored. It's like you know the only rules we have to follow as comedians is like, okay, if we're on live television and okay, we shouldn't curse and or you know the rules that apply in that particular you know element that we're in. But it's so great to be able to get up on stage and talk about stuff. I love it because it winds up being therapeutic for me. Like right now. I've been talking about my father's death yeah. on stage, which is for me is great, but it's funny because people get so serious when you talk about death, but we all deal with it. Mm -hmm. And the, the joy of being a comedian and talking about it is that you get to touch people in a way that, you know, mm -hmm. you know they don't expect to be touched a lot of times. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, because when I talk about my father dying, it's one of those things where, like, every time I talk about my father dying, people are like, oh, I'm so sorry, and they look like this. And it's like, if it did, and when it, right after he died, it was, if, there, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. And I was like, well, uh, can you bring him back? You know, nobody's done that yet. But, you know, it's, like, but, uh, you know it, it's, 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 it's also just one of those, like I said, therapeutic, so I get a chance to just kind of take a, a look of, at his influence on me. And everything but you know that's what I love about comedy being able to talk about any subject well that's why I was gonna open a, a mortuary with a salad bar <laughs> oh, I thought that would have been a nice touch <laughs> you know who John Duddy is yes John's a great fighter you yes. ever see him box no I didn't I, well, didn't I think box, he's gonna come out here and he's kick gonna, your butt he's gonna deck me that's yeah. so oh here's John Duddy after we take a break <laughs> be right back <laughs> don't have a lot of free time to exercise and keep yourself in shape. For me, the answer is the Ab Glider from Proform. I can't tell you how much I love this amazing machine. It's a great fat-burning cardio workout, too. And it's fun. Unlike other ab machines, the Ab Glider combines circular and crunch motions for a fast, fun workout of your entire midsection. You engage more muscles, get a better cardio workout, and burn twice the calories of other ab machines. I went from an 11 to a size 4. 20 inches total. It's really easy and it's fun. With this offer, you'll get an onboard workout computer, Elizabeth's three-minute rapid results DVD, and her amazing abs instructional DVD, plus her amazing abs eating guide, a $159 value free. Try the Ab Glider now for 30 days, risk-free, for as little as $14.95. If you're not totally satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. You can't find a better way to get better abs at a better price. And getting started is easy. Just call or go online to proform.com. Are you holding the remote right now? It's nice to be in control, isn't it? To fast forward to the good parts? Oh, hold on. We're getting to the good part. If you're receiving a structured settlement from a lawsuit, you know it is not easy to wait for payments, especially when it could be 10 or 20 years before you collect all your money. What you may not know is that you can skip ahead and receive a lump sum of cash now. Call CBC Settlement Funding for a free, no obligation offer about your structured settlement. Whether you access all or just a portion of your future payments, we put you in control so you can fast forward and collect your money now. If you need cash now, call the number on your screen and find out how CBC Settlement Funding can help. We'll guide you through the process so you can take control of your finances and get your money faster. Call CBC Settlement Funding today. Reverend Al just popped up in my window behind me. I must have said something wrong. Soon you say the word nappy, Reverend oh, Al boy. pops up for several reasons. <laughs> what? Something wrong with my hair? 
Did you say napping? <laughs> <laughs> Who you said was napping? Well, you know, I would be a bad host if I didn't have some sort of continuity, and I think I'm a good host. Uh, there are, I got to be people watching the shows that think, why the hell didn't he ask him what he thinks is funny about his father's death? You know, because <laughs> we don't have any cue cards here. And I, what, what would be funny about your dad's you know, death? You know, it's really not the death itself, because of course, there, you know, every day I, I have my moments where I think about him, and especially having a son, you know, I feel a connection to him. But my father was a funny guy, and he's the kind of guy who could find humor in anything. And also, just in the therapy of talking about his death, you find humor. And like for me, I, I look at it more as the journey from the last few years. And I just, you know, there were, for me, there, was a, uh, there were points where I could, in retrospect, look and see that my father was getting older. And one of those points was when my father had an accident in his pants when we were heading to church together. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th you know, I, but somehow in the midst of us going to church together, my whole family was going to church together, and Ricky, the baby boy, became responsible for taking my father home after he had an accident in his pants. Yeah. So I was like thinking that this changes. was this, yeah, this was this crazy situation, and I was like, I got to think of something to say to my father or whatever, and I go up to him and say, what happened, Daddy? He said, I thought I had to fart. <laughs> so I lose. What the fuck? Trying to cross my legs. Too late. So you know, now we're riding home. We've got to, you know, and I'm like still in my head, like, man, I got to think of something to say. And, and out of the blue, he says, I bet you didn't expect this to happen when you woke up this morning, did you, boy? This is one hell of a ride, boy. If you think it's one hell of a ride, you try sitting in the seat I'm sitting in right now. <laughs> and so we got home, and I became responsible for having to, you know, I'm sorry, right, Daddy, give me your pants. Mm -hmm. I'll clean those out for mm -hmm. you. You go to the bathroom and finish mm -hmm. off what you started in your pants. You know, and it was just one of those things where that particular experience was something where in retrospect I, it kind of from that day forward I kind of like knew my father is getting older and you know but my father was the kind of guy where after that happened you know even the way he reacted to it like he did he it was it was it was funny to him yeah. he was like he was you know because he could sit back and think you know what if I was a young guy and I heard of an older dude messing his pants I might laugh first before I find out to see if he was all right <laughs> and he would always like people would come by the house he's like did Rick tell you I had the crappy pants <laughs> yeah I thought I had the fart I let it loose wasn't the fart you know so, so that's in the act yeah and you know and it's, so it's in the act yeah. and it's like you know and I always talk about you know because it's always so funny because people go on this journey with me and and there are some people who react like it's the nastiest story they ever heard. And I was like, no, no, that's my father. When that's I was real. a baby, he used to clean my little crappy diapers. And, you know, it's like the circle of life, yeah. which really hit home with me two years ago when yeah. I had my son. Now you got your book, From Pampers to Depends. <laughs> right. It's like, you, <laughs> you know, got that little baby out there now. Right. And Write so, that down. So it's like, I'm like, when I change his diapers, I'm like, you know what? I'll pay you back later. You'll get me <laughs> on the other side, <laughs> right? When you're going to church with him one day. Right, one day. We got, day, we got uh, John Duddy is out here now. Uh, he's standing in the hall, and he's in his boxer trunks, and he's got his gloves on. This is, uh, this is the way he's coming to us tonight? Or is he dressed in a I think he's I have no idea. Uh, John Duddy, come on out, John. Come on, come on and join the crowd here. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh yeah. yeah. He's, he's all right. A GQ guy. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, see, this, this guy should not be a fighter. Should never be a fighter. All right. How are you? How are you there? Good. All right. Hello there. And nice to Jay. see you. Tay, all, all right. right. Now, John is Irish, of course. I don't know if you know that or not. What? And give that away. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was the, uh, the great hope of, of boxing when I first saw him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could tell a little story. I was at uh, that... Metro, what's the name of that place on 40, on uh, the, the Hammerstein Ballroom, Hammerstein, is that it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And John, John had no credentials at that time. You, you had a green card. It was American Express. I don't think you had a real right <laughs> uh, to be yes, here. Yes, you're 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw this guy fight, and I said, you know, I, this guy's got to, he's going to be the next big thing. Yeah. He has to be. I mean, look at, look at the way he fights. You know, he was relentless and, and stylish mm -hmm. and good looking. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, we haven't had anybody like this in a long time. Because, you know, what? If you don't, whether you like Muhammad Ali or not, he was very handsome. Mm -hmm. right? and, and he had style. Mm -hmm. And he was smart. Yeah. So I, I, I met John. I stayed uh, uh, after the fight. Mm -hmm. And I introduced myself. And I was standing next to him. And I walked along with him. And someone thought I was his promoter. <laughs> because I looked too, uh, too much like a, a fight promoter more than I did anything. Nobody right. knew who I was. Yeah. And, I, and I said, no, 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 I'm just, just a fan. 
And, and, I, and I, every time he fought, I would go to the press conference because I knew he was going to be the champ. And, and, I, and I always loved the way he carried himself. Mm -hmm. And at one time, I'll tell one other thing, uh, I figured this guy should be in the movies. There's no doubt about it. This is not Rocky. Right. But this is Tyrone Power. Yeah. You know, if you go back that generation, where you had a really good looking guy who was in shape, mm -hmm. and he wasn't, you never <laughs> wanted to see him get hit in the face. <laughs> that was the key, is that he, John is the kind of guy you don't want to see get hit. So you get mad at whoever's <laughs> messing with him. Because how dare you touch John's face? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's how he felt in the ring. How oh. dare you touch John's face, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, and invariably, he has a soft face. He would get cut. Yeah. Isn't that true, John? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got cut out of my 31 fights. I got cut about eight times. Yeah. But in, uh, like one of my fights, I had 58 stitches Ooh. on my face after, over both eyes. Mm. So he never quit. Thing. No, we all wanted to go in and kick the other guy. <laughs> right. How dare you touch John? <laughs> yeah. But you have such a following. I mean, you know, uh, uh, and, and he was one of the first guys on the Internet. Mm -hmm. who had, and James Moore. Yes, your that's friend true. James. James, who's yeah. also Irish and a good, good fighter, yeah. different kind. And, and you know, they, uh, they both were subculture heroes. They mm -hmm. built following. They started out uh, with a little following at the Hammerstein Ballroom when he got his card and he started mm -hmm. to fight here with the Irish Ropes people. Mm -hmm. And then he got, a, they expanded the franchise and he was at Madison Square Garden in the Felt Forum, which became the, the secondary room to mm -hmm. the big arena. Mm -hmm. and, and then he was in the big arena, you know, but, all, but he kept, the crowd kept getting bigger for him. Yeah. And, and he wasn't Puerto Rican, hmm. which was astounding. Right. You know, because, <laughs> well, you know, that's what Don King did. That's why yeah. I'm saying it that yeah. way. He would put a Puerto Rican against a, a black guy uh -huh. on, on, the, uh, on the Puerto Rico day, you know? Right, right. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's like almost like uh, it's a, a race race. Right, right. So, but John was just a good fighter. Yeah. yeah. And, and everybody, everybody knows right. it. <laughs> so now we just talk right. a little. What's, what, you got to do a movie, John. I'm going to try. I'm not going to try. I'm going to do a movie someday. Good. So uh, I'm not going to. I was lucky enough after I announced my retirement. Uh, I was asked to be in part on a, a play, Kid Shamrock, about Bobby Cassidy. He fought in the garden mm -hmm. as well and in the Felt Forum a few times against Regal Valdez. And uh, his son wrote a screenplay about uh, his father's life. And that went pretty well. And it looks like hopefully they'll be bringing it back again. So uh, fingers crossed on that. And, other than that, just trying to keep busy. I'm, I'm doing some commentating. I'm actually working for the Madison Square Garden on the Golden Glove Finals. The MSG is the MSG yeah. network. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good for you I'm for the Golden Glove Finals. So uh, since I hung them up, the phone's still ringing. Thank God. And uh, I'm going to try and pursue whatever opportunities and whatever doors came in my direction when I was fighting, and see now if I can, I can open them and, and pursue a career and, and where I don't get the. Uh, Marked up or cut anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so how old are you now, John? I'm 31. Uh, this is almost, you're almost over the hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, you, you follow fights at all, Rick? I, I haven't followed a lot recently. I, I grew up in the Sugar Ray Leonard, Wilfredo Benitez, yeah. you know, Alexis Arguello. Yeah, those right. guys. Yeah, when yeah, the welterweights yeah. were really doing things. I used things. to go to fights all the time yeah. in Atlantic City. Did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did I you did. ever see John fight? I never did, no. See, now this is the kind of guy that would bring you back. I think so. it's a younger demographic, yeah. and that's, that was the hope, you mm -hmm. know, to find a couple guys like that. And uh, uh, Paulie Malinaggio, yeah, who was yeah. Italian from, mm -hmm. obviously, from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. But Paulie's another guy. He, he, was, he, got, he really almost lost his nose one night. Oh. Yeah. But he never quit either. No, he's still going. He's still fighting. I mean, he went all the, all the distance. You know, mm -hmm. he went all the rounds. He wasn't a fake. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is not a guy who's trying to duck out of a, out of a match. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and he was Kodo, too, who was yeah, very right. strong. Yeah, oh, uh, uh, Paulie Malinaggio, you know, he has a, a lot of courage. And even in that fight against Cotto, I think he, even though he lost that fight, he left the arena with more fans than he had going, going on there because he showed much courage and determination because he got, he got laid out, I think, in the second or third round. He got up, he had his cheekbone fractured, I think. Oh. It was busted up pretty bad. And he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him the whole 12 rounds, you know, and you got to commend the man at it. And he's still fighting. And after that fight, he went on and won a world title too, oh. which is something that... Unfortunately, I never achieved, but 
uh, it's, it's, it's what always inspired us, the fact we trained together in Gleason's. Yeah. And he was such a great personality outside the ring as well, you know, like, and he was fun around the gym. And he mm. always had girls with him. He had like yeah. a dozen <laughs> girls following him. There's Harry about a hundred waiting for him now. Outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, John, John, Let me tell my wife, Mom, I'll get in trouble. John got married, see, and, and he ruined the whole game. Uh, <laughs> right. And James Moore, too, Jim. James Actually, Moore. James Moore is now expecting his first baby boy to, great. today. Hmm. Wow. These are the oh, great, see, you know, uh, you know yeah. I, so now, those watching the show tonight, you maybe don't know, but there's a whole, the, the boxing career has been, it, it's been exaggerated in this generation mm -hmm. by people from Russia mm -hmm. or the Ukraine, you know, with the Klitschko's, because they're real big and they're, they're heavyweight fighters. And, you know, it's always good to see a giant fall. Mm -hmm. But they, they are so strong. But, you know, these guys are the dancers, like James Moore. I'm mentioning their names, Pauly, and, of course, John Duddy. They're the ones who, when you see them in the ring, you really can't stop watching them mm -hmm. because they move around a lot, and you know they're looking for the right angle. They dance. It's an art when you guys yeah. are fighting. If you oh, go on the nice. channels where John's fights are, which I still see now, yeah. and you see the MSG, I think it's Madison That's Square right. yes. channels, and you see John's fights, you'll say, why isn't this guy, why don't we see this all the time anymore? Yeah. You know, and it, and it was, it, it was a, a, it's too bad that you, you really decided that you weren't going to do a fight this year. I'm not doing a fight any other year. No? I, I'm finally supposed to. It's going to be a movie star. You just told him that. All right. Right? Well, yes, he, he yeah. could do Follow both. the Hollywood, please. <laughs> but, but, you know, The Rock left for a while in wrestling, and he, and he did some films. Yeah. And now he's back wrestling again, maybe to pump the new movie. Right. But, you know, I, and, uh, hopefully he'll be okay. But, but, you know, there's a whole thing about you guys that sports is show business now. Yeah. And there's, there's a, a glamour in it. There's also the gl there's a glamour in, in the movie The Boxer. Did you see The Boxer? Oh, fantastic movie. Did you like yeah. it? I did like it, yeah. yeah. And was uh, it real to you? Yeah, it was very real because I know Mickey. Yeah, I've yeah. met Mickey. I've trained in his gym a few times. I was totally surprised with Diggy because I never yeah. met Diggy before and I didn't think he was really like that. And then at the end of the movie when you see the two brawlers mm -hmm. sitting together talking, no, Mickey's typical fighter, head down, yeah. nice, no, does the talking with his hands. Right. And Dickie's got the hands up, and I'm like, oh man, that's amazing. They nailed you know, it. That, oh, they were fantastic, yeah. you know. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. When you come back the next time, you can come anytime you want, but when you oh, come here, you've you got to promote your show. Yeah. And we have to get, we've we got to get a film deal going with you, because <laughs> you just got that thing, you know. It's a, it's, it's a, am I right, Rick? Yeah, well, when you told me, you said, you, when I came into the, the green room, you, you're like, you, you tell me John Duddy's here, and he's a boxer, and I'm, I'm like, okay. The pretty guy in the chair <laughs> obviously is not the box. I'm like, where's the, where's the guy? I, I, I was I was an ugly child, so it was the the punches. I think I've done the, all the, the surgery for me, you know. Well, you're not going to have to wear this sign. We got a camera close up here, you guys. We can get one. All right, this is not going to be John Duddy's T-shirt. He will not have to wear this. Uh, let's let's get a close up of it because they're not going to know what the hell kiss I'm talking me, about. Kiss me, I'm Irish. Oh, man, <laughs> as long as it's not a five knuckle kiss, I'll be okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I've had enough of them yeah, in my life. Oh, well, John, you're great. You're such a good guy. Oh, thank you very much for having me, Joey. And have a happy St. Patrick's Day too. I'm, I'm looking for. I'm actually marching on it this year for the first time. Good. So that's because every year I was always training or fighting. Right. You know, so I'm I'm very lucky to go there with a. I was invited as a, a an assistant to the Grand Marshal of a, an ABO an organization, and I'm just I can't wait to uh, to go out there and experience it. Hopefully, it gets a bit warmer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As well as killing me, you know. By the 70th, they will. <laughs> but you're you're great, and I and I'll always think of you as being a champ. Oh, thank you're you, a Joey. champ. I really appreciate great. that. Thank you. John Duddy, Great be job. right back. Hi, I'm Riley Ethers Jr. My new Rock Ridge music release, Powder Keg, I went live in the stores yesterday, and my good friend Wendell Tilly from Nashville, Tennessee, and Fabian Monson from Stockholm, Sweden. We look forward to doing a couple songs for you here with Joey after the break. Hi, I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. 
For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over 5 million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-440-2181. 1-800-440-2181. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Hot dog stand outside on 43rd and 3rd is owned by an Egyptian, and we used to talk to him about, uh, about obviously Egypt when when the crisis was on, and uh, they now have done so well they've opened a second wagon, so it was a one wagon corner. Now there are two wagons, and the, and the second wagon has theater lights on it. I mean, you're gonna <laughs> you, you, you can take a shot of it and show everybody. I mean, the, the guy's got a big signage out there now. Look at Well, yeah. You know, I mean, all of a sudden, they, are, they got the lights of Broadway. And it was a little hot dog stand to begin with. But the worst hot dog stand was, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, it was on 42nd Street. You know, when, there was, when this neighborhood was all these sleazy, uh, dirty theaters that yeah. we used to go to? Yeah. And, you know, and, and it turned out to hold uh, uh, kung fu movies yeah, and, yeah. you know, all the, yeah. all the Bruce Lee films. And, 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 and it was an excuse for people to, to go into the theater, which actually we didn't go in to see Bruce Lee. Uh, but, you know, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of porno shops yeah. here as well. Yeah. And it was a pretty, pretty Dang. awful neighborhood yeah, it was. until the city changed it by, you know what really changed it too? I should we'll bring it on the air. I'm going to bring Mark Elia out here who, who wrote uh, Down 42nd Street. He wrote the book about it. And what they did was they convinced Disney to, to have a tax-free theater mm -hmm. on the corner. And they built these, and, and this is Mayor Koch, built these anchor stores that were high-rise buildings that they could have this rent-free structure all the way up. And now, of course, you know, there was one on each corner, and they filled it in. Filled it in yeah. And we have everything from uh, Applebee's to mm -hmm. the AMC theaters. Yeah. And now that it's bed bug free, we're all real happy. <laughs> but you know, not to, not to remind them of it, uh, <laughs> but I did. There's a, there's a, a series of, of stores that we're holding out to the very end. And this one guy, when I was living with Kramer, uh -huh. you know, on, uh, at the uh, uh, little apartment house down the street, uh, Kramer and I lived together for about a year. We had him on the show that last week. We, we did this already, but I want to tell you about the hot dog stand. There was a guy who had, the, he was waiting to get the right price, and they would, then they would be able to buy him out. Mm -hmm. And he had the sleaziest place you ever saw. You know, it was, I think his slogan was, fill your middle at the griddle or something. You know, I mean, it was really <laughs> stupid hot dogs that were overcooked or really, you could see the grease Bees. on it, you know. Bees. But when you're drunk, 
at three in the morning, and you're coming out of a porno show. Yeah, that's probably that seems to be a gourmet meal. Yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah. It's like a hot dog really gives you back what you lost when you went to a porno. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, Let me eat a hot dog. Oh my goodness, that was quite a movie. That's it. <laughs> yeah. In L.A., there's a place called Pink's, and has the best grease in L.A. Uh, and that's another one of those spots where, where you go when you're drunk, you know. <laughs> How do I know them? <laughs> I don't know. But the guy got bought up, and yeah. he was real, oh, boy, did he have a celebration. He asked me if I wanted a free hot dog that night. <laughs> I said, no, thanks. <laughs> All right, so we're going to bring some melody out here now tonight. Singer, songwriter, Riley Etheridge, Jr., and he's got, what do you, who you got with you, Riley? got Joey, Joey Barron is not with you, he's with us. And who else? Uh, Wendell Tiley and Fabian Manson? Exactly. Fabian, right. boy, you got a dichotomy with that name. <laughs> Fabian Manson, is that like, oh my God, please don't even go there. <laughs> One is beautiful and the other is even more beautiful. <laughs> so here, here's Riley Etheridge. In this moment, there is no hesitation. It's just pure elation I find in this moment. You're my soul dedication But thanks for this moment in time Time finds a way to rush by These be catching my breath Life is just a blink of the eye But now you're here with me you hold me tenderly but Nothing's passing me by In this moment There is no hesitation It's just pure elation I find In this moment You're my soul dedication But thanks for this moment in time Pain finds a way to reside in the front of my mind. But why? Cause I got nothing to hide. You've accepted me unconditionally. There's nothing short of sublime in this moment. There is no hesitation It's just pure relation I find In this moment You're my sole dedication But thanks for this moment in time Finds a way to reside In the front of my mind But why? Cause I've got nothing to hide You've accepted me Unconditionally There's nothing short of sublime In this moment there is no hesitation It's just pure relation I find In this moment You're my sole dedication But thanks for this moment in time I said thanks for this moment But thanks for this moment Thanks for this moment in time I want to come out nice, and shake nice. your hands. Yeah, you <laughs> I want to shake your hands. I just want to show that I'm a good host, that I don't, I'm not sewn to the seat here. Thank you for that. So, Riley, 
Would, the, would this be considered country music or is it folk rock or what? You know, the, the, the name that we get associated with most often is Americana, yeah. which is kind of a blend of folk, rock, blues, country. But you weren't bitching about anything. No, 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 that's kind of maybe why it's not country. But you need an edge, you know, you need to start complaining. Yeah, I don't have that much to complain about. Well, this is America. I mean, I what are you talking about? Yeah, this all point. we do is find fault with each other. Yeah, we'll work on that. Yeah, you got to you can you need something a little bit more grinding, you know. We we need Rick Younger to write you a song cuz he <laughs> complains about everything. Trains, jails. Yeah, every yeah. Moms that drink. Well, those are those are old issues. You got to pick on new issues, you know. Okay. There's got to be uh, uh, you know, something that's a little more contemporary like like how the rest of the world is going to hell and we're getting to watch them on TV. Ah. That's different. Yeah, that's it? a good point. Yes, and and how we're not getting involved in another war? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's kind of interesting? Yeah, you know, the whole political thing is not my strong suit. No, but, but everything is under politics. I mean, there's an umbrella called politics. It's in your family. Yeah. Don't you have any shame? Fair enough. <laughs> oh, no, we, we, we write a lot about shame. shame. I see. Shame we've got. Give us another song or two. We'll get to that. But you're not Jewish. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I love, I love the, the music here. It's very nice. It's soothing because it's my, my generation. You know, this is the stuff I used to eat greasy hot dogs to when I was drunk. There we go. <laughs> Did we go there already? <laughs> yeah, I think we've been on the hot dogs. But, yeah. All right, we're going to take, take a break. Who's, the, who's coming out here next again? That movie star guy? Who is it? Jay? Uh, Devin Ratray. Devin Ratray? Ratray. So, yeah, Ratray? Wasn't he in the movie yes, with... Uh, with yeah. He was, he was Kevin's older brother. Kevin's older brother. Yeah. Why are we yelling across the room anymore? <laughs> 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 All right, so Ke what is it? Yeah. It's Devin yeah. Ratray? Ratray. 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 Oh, I better keep Duddy next to me because yeah, really. he's going <laughs> to come out and punch it. He'll come out swinging. We'll be right back. Thank you, Riley. Thanks. Great. Thanks for this moment in time. Time finds a way to rush by. These be catching my breath. Life is just a blink of the eye. But now you're here with me. You hold me tenderly. Nothing's passing me by in this moment. Hi, I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. And if you're busy like me, then stay tuned because I'm excited to share with you the most innovative piece of exercise equipment ever. Introducing the Ab Circle Pro, the fastest, easiest way to have the flat washboard abs and the sexy V-shape you've always wanted. Are you struggling to lose those love handles nobody loves? Now there's a machine so advanced, it targets your entire core, upper, middle, and lower abs, and even your obliques, all in one circular motion as it aerobically burns fat in just minutes a day. The secret is the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your entire midsection in a full circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in just weeks, not months. We guarantee it. Best of all, it's fun and easy and takes just three minutes a day. And watch this. Simply remove the pin, and the Ab Circle Pro becomes a fat-burning bun and thigh machine. On the Ab Circle Pro, I lost almost three dress sizes in a few short weeks. With the Ab Circle Pro system, I've now lost 60 pounds, I feel great, and I'm one hot mama. And now, through this exclusive TV offer, the Ab Circle Pro can be yours to try in your home for 30 days for just $14.95. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, we'll send you Jennifer Nicole Lee's complete Lose Your Love Handle System, which includes our three-minute express workout and nutritional guide absolutely free. That's everything you need to transform that body from flab to ab. You have nothing to lose but inches, so pick up the phone and call now. Call 1-800-709-1301 to try AbCircle Pro for $14.95 plus shipping with credit card order. Call now for a free upgrade to priority processing so you'll get your AbCircle system in 7 to 10 days or less. That's 1-800-709-1301. Call now. Rick 
Younger and John Duddy. John, did you keep your abs? Just a little. A My little? wife won't let them go too far away. No. <laughs> no. Your idea of a six pack is yeah. going to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully next week. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gone to, to Ireland, back to Ireland? Yes, I, I go home at least once or twice a year. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. Go back and see my family and friends and keep the feet on the ground. And your yeah. wife's Irish? Yes, from but the very same town. Her name's Gráinne. Yeah. And, and uh, no kids yet? None yet. We're having too much fun. <laughs> yeah, you're all, also not yeah. having enough money. It, it took us 11 years before we got married, so... <laughs> you know, we're having a lot of fun, right? right. <laughs> so I guess you weren't raised Catholic then. Yes, I was. Yeah, yeah. and you could live in sin like that. Ah, uh, well, do you know what? It's a <laughs> modern know. world, Joey. That's what confessions for. Yes. <laughs> and those Irish priests. You, did I tell you that I had Irish priests in school? I don't know if you knew that or not. No, I didn't. But no. from Ireland. I mean, yeah. they weren't from. They were Franciscan priests from Father Larkin. Right. That would be an Irish name, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, Larkin. Oh yes. And he was uh, a little bit mean, Father Linus. Mm. They, had, uh, they had Irish names and Irish ways, and they believed in fisticuffs. Yeah. And they would, uh, in, in, in those times, they would hit you because it would straighten you out. Yeah. You know, uh, I was told to, that he was going to take no more of my guff. Right. I don't know what guff is. Is that, is that an Irish word? Guff? No. Guff. No. No. There's an R word for it, I'm not sure I could say it. Like, yeah, don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, no, that's a new word. But I think that, well, I grew up, there was capital punishment no, was taken away, like, you know, so teachers and priests couldn't touch you anymore. Oh. So that's how I missed out on that. Well, priests yeah. not touching you was a whole issue. Oh, well, <laughs> of course. <laughs> that's why I, I always stuck the boxing. I was yeah. fighting since it was seven, so that's why I was, I was always yeah, a good boxer. You, you can't do, you can't do it much touching even if it's your own kids these days. It's like, I mean, when we had when we had the baby, it was like you can't even leave the New York hospital without watching a video about not shaking the baby. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, of course, when the baby is born, you're like, it's no way, I'll never shake the baby. It's not, you know, you think you don't need the video mm -hmm. until the first time the baby just goes on and on, and you're like, I'm yeah. thinking about shaking the baby, and then you remember that video, and it keeps you from shaking the baby. So I guess it works. Yeah. Well, we got Devin Rattler here. We should bring him out. Rat Ray. Retray. Rit, what? Retray? Retray. Devin, I'm going to get your name right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know who you are. I just don't know how to say your name right. Devin? <laughs> that part I got right. That's yeah. Irish. Devin is an Irish name, I think. Could be. Yeah, well. Right. Devin, are you right. Irish? Just a half. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> how are you? I'm so sorry for screwing up your name. But Rat Ray? <laughs> Rat Ray. That sounds like Sit a down. street name, like Rat Ray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John Duddy. Of course, Duddy. How are you, doing? Duddy, how how you, are you? Doing? all right? Put you over here. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> <luck>. <laughs> you got to get on that seat because this is mine. Sure, okay. Hey, whatever. Until Rick takes it over. Whatever. This could be any Reynolds. moment Reynolds. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Reynolds. It's fine. <laughs> now, I, I, you, you have a little experience with Macaulay Culkin. A little. Yeah. <laughs> a little experience. And, and he's now grown up. Yeah, age happens to us all. I know. How do, how do, do you talk to him ever? Do you see him these days? I haven't seen him for a while. Uh, he's, I mean, I was four years older than him then. Yeah. Four years older than him now. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference between nine and 13 yeah. <laughs> and now is obviously, you know, a lot more back then. Well, I used he to live in the South Park Towers, which is where he lived on 60th Street. That's oh. where he had that famous fire, you know. Got a match? Yeah, no, no, there's no match for me except for Rick Younger. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that wasn't even that wasn't his fault. That was no. actually a trash uh, started in the trash, and he got blamed for it. It's an unfortunate incident. Oh, well, he's a terrific guy and a, and a good actor, and I knew him. Yeah. I knew him from the South Park Tower. So I oh, you did, like yeah, him very much. Yeah, very and quiet, I, I, keeps to himself. I think also uh, there's another little relationship. Uh, uh, the guy who's producing your show, the you got an off Broadway show right now. I do, and I think you know Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Rich is a guy who, now, I, I want to bring the audience in on this because he's too modest to say this, but he is a guy who created Dr. Laura's career again after, after she was uh, bounced a couple of times. Mm -hmm. He brought her back to prominence, mm -hmm. and uh, prior to that, he had put her on the map to begin with with his company, which was Radio Only, I think it was called. Right. And, and uh, he was a, a theater lover, with uh, local theater and then got into the radio syndication business mm -hmm. and had Rick Dees. 
and the and, famous Rick Dees. Yeah, yeah, an American top forty. And he sold the company to ABC and yeah. then became the head of it for a while. I think of, of one of the divisions. But he's a great guy, and he and he brought some wonderful shows here. He's always he's always had I mean he's always been able to diversify and he's had a love for theater forever yeah. and he's able uh, he returned to that not excluding radio of course he's blowing up all over radio left and right well I think he put Laura on the XM series yeah. yeah and that's you know no small feat no. but uh, with the new group his affiliation with the new group he's uh, continuing to broaden uh, off Broadway and Broadway and. I think Avenue Q was one of his shows. Yes, it was. That was, and it was in development. That was a little show, yeah. Avenue Q. It was a little puppet <laughs> show. Tony Award. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll get a Tony. I think you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they got, they puppets, got a Tony. Puppets with dirty mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Go ask yourself in the A. <laughs> Puppets with dirty mouths. Sounds yeah, like a sequel to Angels with yeah. Dirty Faces. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like something on the TV Funhouse. Like, no, let's give him a Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, he, act, he so clearly he's had a mind for, uh, for vision and seeing, like, what would work. Like, yes, sure, Puppets with Dirty Mouths. Yeah, I would go see that, and I'll charge other people to go see it. <laughs> and I bet you I'll be right. And but he, he, he And now he's, and he's been working with the new group for a long time, bringing big names there. Uh, you know, Scott Elliott's been the... Uh, Artistic director there for f 16 years, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, I first worked with Scott Elliott in 1994 with a workshop there with my father at the new group, and now we're I'm actually there again going on to, I mean, I had to join Equity <laughs> to do this show. What did your father do? My father's an actor. He's a film and Broadway theater actor, as well as my mom. And a big star, uh, and, I don't, and I'm embarrassed. Did he? <laughs> okay. That's okay. You didn't even know my name, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you may have heard of him, Sir Lawrence Olivier. you didn't Olivier. know mine either. No, of course I do, Joseph Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, you got to read it on a cup. <laughs> it's Joey. All uh, night. Joey. <laughs> yeah, I know your name all night. All <laughs> Who's Joey? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're so phony yeah. in our business sometimes that, you know, you gotta, you're got you looking. When you go to a convention, the, you, some people never look you in the eye because they're busy at your, at your name tag. Yeah, or staring at my breasts. Well, well that's the advantage of, of being short. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Now, are you working with Natasha Leone? <laughs> Natasha Leone, I worked with in her first film ever uh, for John Hughes. It was yeah. uh, Dennis the Menace. Um, she She's was, another great, great Fantastic. She's a little treasure. She just closed uh, a show with a new group on Saturday. Yeah. And uh, we are the new show coming in. We Which are, is called? What's it called? Marie and Bruce is the name of the show. Are uh, you and Marie? Yeah, you I, knew that was coming. Yeah. Never mind. Just go over it. It's a bad joke. That's why I'm growing the beer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we open April 4th. It's called Marie and Bruce, and yeah. it's uh, with Marissa Tomei and Frank Whaley. Wow. Frank Whaley actually gave me this when he heard I was coming on your show. He was <laughs> like, you need someone to go with that shirt, man. <laughs> Pick something out of wardrobe. <laughs> I don't know whose suit this is, but that works. <laughs> it's great. I like it. I like this. Now, you know, John Duddy here, we talked a little bit yes. about it. He's got an off, off show. They yeah. haven't, uh, they've tested it a little bit. Oh, yeah. And you should probably meet Jeff Rich. He would fall in love with you and put you on Broadway or off Broadway in one of the Theater Row theaters. Is that where you are? Uh, we are right on th Theater Row. Yeah, right. which I like those theaters. They're, they're fantastic. They're smart and they're air conditioned properly in, in the yeah. summer, as you know. <laughs> well, it's actually kind of to our advantage that they were, that they're new and yeah. renovated because the seats are really comfortable. It's air conditioned. They're a little bit roomy right. for us, you know, former. No, bulimic for, people. For anybody. Uh, I anybody. beat bulimia, man. <laughs> <laughs> I beat it. <laughs> Recovering. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. No, don't be If you were worried about Al Sharpton, now the bulimia people. <laughs> Another, yeah, all I got to do is get arrested. National go on a hunger strike. Association. Yeah. They're coming to get you. Now, Rick is on the front page of, of Weight Watchers magazine. So. Oh, right. Page 16 and 26, actually. All yeah. right. <laughs> Excellent. That's a magazine I, I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's a terrible tip. That would, <laughs> that would work. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's great. You're no, funny. We're, yeah, we're You're a funny guy. You've got to stick around here. Uh, okay. That's cool. We Wait, have a, are the we bars have a still clip. open? We have a clip here we have to show, though. Is this from Elevator? Yeah, Elevator was Shirley Knight. Now, she was here a week or so ago. Oh, good. Great. 
She's an Academy Award nominated twice actress. Yes. And a fine lady, and also uh, in this Sweet film. Sweet Bird of Youth. Is that what we're going to show here? We're going to show oh. Elevator? <clears throat> we're going to show a clip from Elevator. Yeah, uh, uh, is it the trailer? A clip yeah. from it. This, we showed the trailer yeah. before, and now we never got to the clip, so oh, this will be the first time I guess we'll This show is it. a film, uh, it's about eight people. Uh, nine, but one's a little girl, so she doesn't really count. All <laughs> takes place in an elevator. <clears throat> Funny enough, yeah. takes place in an elevator, and uh, very quickly, uh, once the elevator get, gets stuck, and we very quickly find out that there is a bomb on board. Oh. And nine people have to figure out how to get out of a steel box um, before, before it goes boom. And uh, it's, it's, it, there's a lot, I mean, there's tensions of dark comedy, uh, thriller, suspense, horror. It's, it's a very intriguing story. And when I first read it, I was like, there's no way I want to spend a month and a half in a box. I, <laughs> you, but as I read it by page 16, I was like, this is, this is pretty clever. And this is, it keeps you the entire time guessing. I mean, I can clearly tell you there is a bomb in the elevator. And you think, well, where's the mystery? What are we going to watch 90 minutes for? And every single minute, something is changing, something is developing. Oh, it's all in the writing and the directing. It is, it, and it's a fantastic writer and, and then fantastic. The acting. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the acting. <laughs> At least right, we so all get star billing, you know, because there's only eight of us. What are we going to do? Do you have to explain something, or are we just going to look at? Uh, you, I pretty much set it up pretty good. I mean, okay. I'm in an elevator. I'm scared, and Shirley Knight's in there too, sweating. You don't throw up in there, though. I uh, I can't give that away. <laughs> there are a lot of bodily fluids by gas, the end of it. I'll tell you. Gas. There's well, that's the thing. You never want to release yeah. in an elevator. Let them out. Yeah, no, you don't want to do that because there's a bomb. Oh. So that. So basically, there's a lot of us bloated by the end of the movie. A lot, a lot of gas eggs. <laughs> well, let's let's see what what we're in store for yeah. when we see the film, All the right. elevator. Take a look. So that's it. This is, this is one where we all die. It happens. This is where it's going to happen for us. That's all. That's all because of this, this pathetic old woman who can't take responsibilities for her actions. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that hilarious? <laughs> so a it's a too, dark film, but it's too short. I mean, we didn't yeah. see enough here. What are you guys trying to? Ch well, it, we all explode right after that. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks. Oh, don't give know. the don't <laughs> give that away. Yeah. That's why you gotta see it. You gotta see it then. Yeah, that's the moment where I uh, where we we get the information that like there is really no hope. So when is this elevator gonna open? You know, it's uh, the date is up in the air right now. Uh, we're going to certain film festival because it's being edited. Also, the uh, the director, uh, who's fantastic, he's a Norwegian and brought a lot of his friends from there, and they're uh, they're cutting it in Norway, yeah. and they're going to try and release it there for film festivals first. Okay. But they're coming here <laughs> soon, very soon, uh, within the year, definitely before 2012. All right. So before we see this film, which is we put in the back of our heads, when we see the elevator, we'll know to go see it. Yeah. Let's talk about what you're doing now, so that we can actually see you Absolutely. with a job that's going to give you money right now, <laughs> hopefully. Well, it's theater, so <laughs> money, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it uh, opens April 4th, uh, and we are, well, previews open uh, March 14th, and we are rehearsing every day right down the street. Uh, we're a block away on 42nd on Dyer Avenue for you New Yorkers. <laughs> Most cab drivers don't know Dyer. I'm like, take me, they're like, what? Are you know Queens? <laughs> Probably Dyer in Queens, but no. Nah. But we're right down here, and uh, you know, when I got the invite to come here, we just, I sauntered on up the street after rehearsal, stole a pocket chief from uh, Frank Whaley first, and uh, we're rehearsing. It's going to be, a, it's a fantastic show. We just. There's revolving sets and... Not, not just two people in it, not Marie and Bobby or whatever. No, no, no. Uh, Marissa Tomei and Frank Whaley are Marie and Bruce and yeah. backed up by a fantastic ensemble cast of seven other actors. Uh, I happen to be one of them. Uh, we're better ones. But we <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get in trouble for this. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> what, what, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? You can't. What are you going to do? You going to come on the show? No. They're fan I mean, there's loads of fantastic people. 
<laughs> loads of fans. I mean, you know, Tina Banco, Adam uh, Tracy. I'm gonna uh, uh, Allison Wright. There's a, fin uh, a fantastic amount of people on the show. Uh, every one of us is really. I mean, I'm so proud to be to join the professional theater community with this production. And Marissa Tomei. I mean, it's, she's it's, you know an angel yeah. on screen, and it's so rare to actually work with somebody who is as delightful. Like the persona that you always imagined a movie star to be when you meet them, it, it's like to wake up, you know, to walk in in the morning and say good morning, and she's like, oh, good morning, <laughs> you know, she's so sweet, she's so sweet, and you know, Frank, the nicest thing he ever did for me was give me this Bacher cheek. He also gave me this little shiner. <laughs> well, we can get learn your lines. Daddy can do that for you. <laughs> yeah, please, yeah. You show me some defensive moves he's against he, Whaley. He, he's yeah. ready. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we, we're going to take a little break here, guys. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we're going to come back with uh, Tonya, right? All right, let's take, let's take some time out, and we'll be right back. Excellent. Some great coffee. BAM's Auto Body, located on Liberty Avenue in Ozone Park, is a one-stop shop equipped with all the latest technologies to fix your car or truck right the first time. We work with all major insurance companies and specialize in collision, theft, and vandalism repair. Call anytime to check your vehicle status. Speak with our dedicated and knowledgeable staff. We offer a 100% written guarantee on all repairs and a lifetime warranty on all paint repairs. BAM's Auto Body, we'll get your vehicle fixed no matter what. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades and new custom built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100 or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ Market Site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Right, I here, you know, Tonya, Burn, Tonya. Campbell. Voila. I will not have any more of that Belgium chocolate. <laughs> now, do you remember the Sandler and Young? Oh, yeah. Well, he does a wonderful impression Belgians. of, and he's Belgium, and he has a home there still, and he has, uh, does a, uh, a wonderful impression of Maurice Chevalier. Who's my uncle? I didn't know that. Now that you I do. didn't know. Now you do. Well, but also, un unfortunately, we lost a great friend, uh, Charlie Callis who used to do a mime of, from Gigi, uh, where he would have that rubber face and make those faces, and you would see him move his mouth to the, to the, uh, uh, the soundtrack. Music. Yeah, yeah the and, he, and it, was, it was just hysterical, I mean, uh, wonderfully he's done. He's gone. But you learned how to sing from Maurice Chevalier? No, from Jacques Brel. Yeah, because Maurice Chevalier learned to sing. He, we he was just... more of an actor. He You're was saying. a comedian, really. Yeah. Yeah, he loved, yeah. loved people. To, to, to him, he wanted to make people laugh. Yes. You know, and he, but, you know, he was absolutely wonderful. 
Well, Jacques Brel, who, who was uh, later expanded upon by Rod McEwen. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. he took uh, one of his great songs and... If You Go Away. If You Go Away and I Know You Must, which I always <laughs> thought would be, would be funny for Jackie Mason. You know, if you go away, and I know you must, you know, but if you stay, I'm going to get you something else. But you know, if you got to go, I mean, you got to go, leave me alone. But if you're going to stay, and then you go, that's a Jacques Brel. I'll know? try not to think of that next time I sing it. No, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to sing for us tonight? Uh, this one is a song of Piaf, Miller. Uh, Edith Piaf, who, of course, uh, was, was not at the Metropolitan Room. No. <laughs> never played the Metropolitan <laughs> no, Room. No, no, Carnegie Hall, but not the and, Metropolitan Room. And never a small little room that's intimate and yeah. gorgeous, and you're going to be there when? I'm going to be there uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Of this week? This week. And you will be singing Edith Piaf songs? This, the show is called Piaf, Chevalier, Brel, and Me. Oh, well then you've got everybody covered. You could go to Paris <laughs> now and uh, smoke. That's right, that's right. That's <laughs> well, let's, let's uh, hear a little. Edith Piaf, of course, was famous for uh, uh, No Regrets. That's right, that's yeah. what it was. No regret. That was actually the song they played on her funeral. The, oh, the, the yeah. Fame. You know what they're going to put on my, on my coffin? What? Nobody liked him but the people. <laughs> they're going to put it right there. I have trouble with management, have you noticed? You know, they're pushing me along now. You know that, right? Oh, they they want to move know. this along. But they push you with love. Is that what you call that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Makes I'd rather have better. it done with money. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to sing? You're going to sing If You Go Away? Uh, no. No, no. I'm going to sing the Piaf song Piaf. and then the Brel song, uh, If We Only Have Love. All right. Good. Oh, that's, that's great. That's yeah. got drums, too. <laughs> yeah, but Not we tonight. don't want drums. We don't want drums. <laughs> okay. Well, let's hear this. All right? Okay. I'll get out of the way so you can... Thank you. You know, there's a two-drink minimum here. Is there? I think I've lived that out. That's not unusual. <laughs> This song was made famous by the great Edith Piaf. And it's the story of a lady of the night who works the harbor and every so often she sees this very handsome lord with the most beautiful girl and they're so in love. But then sometime later the lord comes back on his own looking sad and devastated. The lady of the night realizes he lost his love and wanting to console him because she's feeling his pain she walks up to him. Allons, Milor. C'est la vie. You met her at a ball. Her lips were ruby red. Her lazy, sensuous walk soon turned your noble head. You're not the first to find that love can be unkind. And still the world goes round with one heart left behind. That lovely girl, Milor has got a heart of ice life can be hell me though as well as paradise come on get wise me love her lips don't lies me love the charm of all the arms will make your heart forget not god the cost me love let her get lost me love one memory can be a lifetime of regret so let it go me love Come on, relax with me. I'll love you through the night. Your heart will be free. Dire qu'il suffit parfois qu'il y ait un navire pour que tout se déchire. Quand le navire s'en va, il l'amenait avec lui. La douce aux yeux si tendres qui n'a pas su comprendre qu'elle brisait votre vie. L'amour, ça fait pleurer comme quoi l'existence. Ça vous donne toutes les chances Pour les reprendre après Come on, get mad, me love Dogs not so bad, me love Laissez-vous faire, me love Venez dans mon royaume Je soigne les remords Je chante la romance Je chante les milors Qui n'ont pas eu de chance Je vous connais, me love Vous ne m'avez jamais vu Mais Vous pleurez, Milor, ha, ça je l'aurais jamais cru. Do I see tears, Milor? Ah, oh, come on, no tears. Smile for me. Ah, oh, you can do better. Un petit sourire, voyons. 
Un petit effort Come on, Mila We'll sing together We'll dance together Yes, like that You smile now La, 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 la 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 Now that's that's a classic. That's a she's a class a first class lady, Absolutely. but it's a classic presentation of of nightclub. Absolutely, and that's the European style. That's what you're used to seeing, John, in Ireland, right? Uh, I've seen some th some things, but uh, that was amazing. Yeah. So was, I really enjoyed that. It's <laughs> great. It, so was, it was like the cameras. If if they could have seen us, we were like all ready to dance. <laughs> 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 We just need a couple of bottles of mead, like special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacques Lorraine is alive and he's living in Paris. Oh. La vie's a carousel. Yeah, you turned that into Les Mis. I don't know how you did that. There's no one. There's nothing miserable about it. It's no, very joyous. No, 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 no. It's a joie de vivre. Is that what they call that? That's spy don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be right back with uh, Albert Wunsch and the Fortunate Sons, I guess, is a book that uh, Albert's our resident uh, historian, and he's a lawyer in New Jersey as well as a stand-up comic and best of friends with Charlie Callis, who used to do the impressions of Maurice Chevalier. So we will bring uh, Albert out here and Matthew Miller and L Lyle Libovitz. I'm having trouble with names tonight. It's, it's you know, all right. You know, I, <laughs> I have that effect on beautiful men. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Life can be hell, me love, as well as paradise. Come on, get wise, me love. Her lips don't lies, me love. The charm of all the arms will make your heart forget the drug, the cost, me love. Let her get lost, me love. What memory? celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. Yeah. It's where Cat Greenleaf gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Tell me something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champ. I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm a grandma. <laughs> I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I am an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night, a helping hand, the characters of New York, the spirit of New York, told our way. 
LX New York. Weekdays at 5. We're all over town. Camera moves in, and, and all of a sudden, people who were took a little nap. They said, "There's others out there now. Other new people on the thing." <laughs> I keep. I wish we got to do something about this desk, because it's a sports kind of thing. Yeah. It looks like ESPN again. I, I keep saying that, you know, and also it may be a, a little newsy. I'm, I, I'm, I feel a little bit like a newsman sometimes, because it's you got to have a table or something though, mm. because. Uh, I don't know. There are certain things you get used to in, in television, and we grow up with them, and you can't shake them easily. It's like soundtracks on sitcoms. Finally, we got rid of them with Seinfeld. I don't think they use a soundtrack, do they? There's yeah. some of them. They finally got rid of them somehow. There was some on that. Yeah. They did get rid of it towards the end. Now, Albert Wentz is here. Albert's an attorney, and, and Albert is a, a, a clown. You know, Thank also, but, but an attorney, you, you, you mostly defend police officers That's in New Jersey. That's correct. And you're very well respected, which is Appreciate that. A part of the reason why we have you here. You're, you've been on Court TV, which has now become True TV. And you were on XM and Sirius for a lot of years, and then you got not so serious. Yes. Uh, and, and now tonight, uh, you have the largest book collection of anybody I know. I, I like saying all this so that we can credential you. And even the director of the show, Joe Valenti, said to me tonight, Did you read the book? I said, I don't read the books. We got Albert. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, Albert's like the guy who, who you have where you don't have to fake it. That's I mean, this correct. is a terrible job. Like, I remember Larry King. Uh, <laughs> you know, yes. He would say, I want to remain curious. Yeah. No, Larry, you are just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't want to, I'm not even that curious about Fortunate Sons with uh, these two guys, but you read the book. Right? I read the book. Yeah. Of course, I read it's, the book. I, actually, you would be curious. This is like right up your alley. Now, you Matthew know Miller said hello to me, but I had never met him before. Yes, you did. He said that. Yeah. Mm. But I don't remember him. Yeah, and, and it was Leah Leibovitz, but that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Where was it? <laughs> Back on, on uh, the old days, WOR. What was he doing? Did you we read another a, book? We had a book, Lily Marlene. We talked about your pig. Oh. Now I remember that. You had the pig in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, now I, I remember my interview with you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, I, I, I know you guys are good writers, and, and Albert is a good reader. So that's together. And, and, uh, and then there's Rick Younger, who uh, he and I remain ignorant. Yes, we uh, like to just we like fly to, by the seat of our pants. That's right. That's what we bring to the thing. And yeah. that's why we're here at the table, because it's like a sporting event, and that's why we have the sports day. Is that what it is? Yes. Also because we're not wearing pants. <laughs> that that's too. Right. So that's, that's, yeah, that's why we nixed the couch, because <laughs> what? I think we should bring back like no pants, mm -hmm. but you know, regular tops. That's bring back like a Virginia Graham motif for this. That voice of hers could cut through the <laughs> You know, you could listen to her if you were vacuuming, and I know you don't you're not a housewife. Yes. But if yet. you were vacuuming when, when she was on in those days when we had housewives, the the vacuum could be running and you would hear her five rooms away. You can tell you didn't have an apartment in Manhattan. <laughs> but she was very uh, first. She was the very first one, you know. Yeah. Very the, first talk show host. There was a little chat. They used to chat yeah. on that show. We still do here. You know, this is, uh, uh, I sometimes feel like Merv Griffin or Phil Donahue. That's, that's what they did. They were, uh, well, what's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong with it. People do it all the time when they're no. in person in real life. I don't know wh where they got away from putting, a, putting it on television. They, they uh, seem to think uh, the powers that be, that if you're on TV, you need to cut everything short and, and try to figure out what everybody really is, is tolerant about. And I think when you start trying to figure that out, you're playing God. I mean, nobody really has a, uh, knows what, how much anybody's willing to take that particular moment or day. Because we're, chemically, we're all imbalanced anyway. No. Every day is a different day. That's true. And, and, you know, we call it attention span, short attention span. We call it deficit disorder, bipolar. Hmm. You give it a lot of names. What it really means is you're pretty damn uninterested <laughs> in what's going on. Uh, you know, I, I mean, in, in the days when I was in school, they had me be interested in a book. Like Fortunate Sons is a book that you said I might be interested in. No, I know you'd be interested it's in It's Chinese. Well, but it's, it's the whole sense of community 
that uh. you love to take a look at, and, and the, the melding of cultures. These were young men who were taken from their homes in China and brought over to the United States at a very young age, when, and they were supposed to stay here for 15 years and become educated in the American system. And they, they went to Connecticut and, uh, with the hopes of, of eventually going to like Yale University or, or Princeton or Columbia. And some of them got a chance to get started there, but then they were called back to China. And they brought back all of their experiences. And what's interesting is that you know, they come to America at a very interesting time. Uh, in the 1870s, okay, we have the centennial going on. And they get a chance to go to Philadelphia and take a look at all the wonders of the United States. Everything that the United States had to offer the world was on display. And the other nations came and they would show what they had to offer. And it was just these kids looking at this, their eyes wide open as to what's going on. But as much as we had all of this um, excitement and pro progress and everything else, 1876 was also the year that Custer gets destroyed at the Little Bighorn. Mm. Wow. So as much as we have all of this progress, you still have the, you know, the cowboys and Indians going on. When these young men land in California and come over to the East Coast, they take part in a, in a, uh, a train robbery. You know, they have guys come onto the train and, and rob the train, which had effect on at least one or two of them. They would write about that. So this is not a novel. It's, no, it's not a novel. Well, you know me, I, we never do novels. No, we don't. We never now, you, do novels. You guys uh, had quite, a, quite an experience doing this. What, what brought it on? I mean, why would you pick this, this batch of guys from China? Yeah, it's weird. Well, but he, he, he was the one who found the story. I, I uh, was telling you Albert before, I took the Trans-Siberian Railway with my wife <clears throat> to go from Beijing to St. Petersburg. Yeah. which oddly enough costs, costs less than going from New York to D.C. on a train. <laughs> and we're, we're sitting in Beijing. It's, you know, Beijing, you have all that smog and rain in the afternoons. It's disgusting outside. And we're in the cheap hotel because uh, we don't have a lot of money. And we're sitting, uh, there's one channel on our TV. And it shows some documentary in Mandarin, which neither of us speaks. And there's a photo. Uh, this is a good thing about our book, by the way. It also has photographs. Uh, there's a photo of a young Chinese boy. Uh, the photo looks like it was taken sometime in the 19th century. And he's standing next to what I recognize is Yale University. And I say to myself, hey, I had no idea that there were Chinese students at Yale so early on. And I go back uh, to New York, I tell Matt the story, we start doing a little bit of research and find out that these boys came here and left behind uh, diaries, letters, pieces of their hair, clothes, and all these things uh, are in English and in Connecticut. So we hop into a car, we go to Connecticut, we grab all this stuff, and we think to ourselves, what an amazing story. You well, know, we learned, we learned, for example, that they learned, they, they came here, they were eight, you know, nine, 10, 11 years old. They knew no English. So they had to learn English uh, just by learning how to ask for food. You couldn't get to eat anything unless you knew how to call it English. You were going to say what? Well, I was going to say, the interesting part of the story, I think, wasn't necessarily that they're just in Yale. Lots of people are in Yale. It's that these are boys who are taken from small villages, eight right. years old, nine years old, 10 years old, 120 of them, thrown into a boat, shipped to America, said, you're gonna grow up here. And then even before they can graduate college, they're sent home. So they're neither American completely, nor really Chinese. So in a sense, they only have each other. They're like in this, you know, never, never land of their own experience, but still they manage to become sort of like the founding fathers of modern China. Does it have a surprise ending? Uh, no, I mean, because it's history, so you, you just, you know how it ends. You know how it ends. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, the Boxer Rebellion comes around, we have some problems, and then uh, next thing you know, we're fighting them in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you brought that to another. Yeah. So, the so, end. The end. Go from so there. So, Fortunate Sons. Fortunate Sons, uh, very interesting. Uh, you know, I, I, it was um, nice to see... Yeah, it's funny, because Connecticut could have been the only state that would have actually tolerated this. They could never have gone to Harvard because, you know, Massachusetts, Boston was always so prejudiced. Connecticut was, was, a, was definitely the right community for them, and they fit in well, and they were adopted and, and became really part of that state. And that's why I, I, I was fascinated, because I went to school in Connecticut myself, and, you know, I knew right off the top that they would never have been Harvard men. Well, I, I appreciate the visit tonight. Thank you so much, Thanks. you guys. Thank you. And we'll see you again pretty soon, you know, when you write your next book about 
uh, Al and I and our relationship. <laughs> yeah, the, the unfortunate side. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with uh, who's coming out here? Chef we got a Melody. chef coming up. Melody? Melody. Chef Melody. Oh, good. All right, good. Melody will be here with some Irish food, so you guys can stick around and eat. All we'll right. be right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ Market Site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. That's Devin Radbury getting even with me tonight, and his uh, brother Lou. <laughs> you gave it away. I, I, we, we were going to let him let him think it was a real live New York robbery going on. Oh yeah, is that right? Yeah. No, you don't want to. <laughs> because we don't want anybody to imitate life. Okay. <laughs> uh, now we have uh, Chef Melody here tonight, and and the melody lingers on. I can smell the stew, and while we while we listen to some of the great music of uh, singer songwriter Riley Etheridge Jr. Uh, so why don't you guys play and I'm going to eat, okay? All right, come on, and I'll have some of this wonderful Irish stew and soda bread. Let me phone, left hand side, got a way to all I should. Responsibility, the few, so burn with nothing new. Been 10 long years since my eyes have seen. Had my feet on by you saying. Hope to do the best I can Going home is like a powder keg Just takes one spark for it to blow All the fears the many years have bred And made it hard for me to know Drives a wedge between what is now and used to be. And could the spark be those forgotten dreams surrendered on the river road? Faded photos bear the evidence. We can't hide from who we are. Well, I can't run, I can't try, but I won't get very far. It took me 20 years as I struggled to make sense of who I am. I've seen it too, and the failure of our plans. I tend to take you west, my friend, and leave your troubles far behind. But the only way to free yourself is to make peace with all the time. Spend the rest of it uncertainty. All the things we can't control. So take that fright and leap of faith that keeps us young. Jesus hope Going home is like a powder keg Just takes one spark for it to blow All the fears the many years have bred And made it hard for me to know Is it shame that drives the wedge between Spark be those forgotten dreams Surrendered on the river road Surrendered on the river road
Thank you. Wonderful. I wish we had a bigger crowd outside, but we chased them away, you know. Uh, we, we, there was a robbery that was staged <laughs> outside the studio, and we lost the crowd. See, you can't be fooling around in Times Square like that, you know. People well, are real serious these days. Oh, I think if you look a little further up the street, they're actually getting arrested for impersonating a robbery. So. <laughs> it's it's right to remain got, silent being mentioned. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. Albert Wunsch over here was a lawyer. He's pointing you know. over here like, t yeah. you know, trying to get... Uh, yeah. Counsel, counsel. <laughs> but, you know, we have the life of Riley as we're having, if you pardon the bad puns, <laughs> as we have this beautiful uh, display of Irish stew, which needs more salt. Now, Melody. <laughs> yes, yes, Joey. <laughs> you prepared this great food for us tonight. What's the occasion? Well, St. Patrick's Day is next week. And in Morristown, where I live, we have the largest attendance of any parade in the state. We draw up to 100,000 people, and that's Saturday. Our parade is always the Saturday before St. Patrick's Day. Do you have a mayor that makes fun of the Irish? No. We can loan you ours. We don't, <laughs> but we would borrow yours. Yeah, but he's fine. I like our mayor. Yes. I think he's funny. And I, I think we've had Irish mayors here before. We have. Yes. In this Tam Tammany Hall, wasn't oh, that what it was called? Yeah, a lot of, yes. lot of uh, Irish in the Five Points and everything else. Yeah. It was a big Irish community. Yeah, that's hence the reason why the parade, although it's not the oldest parade hence, in the country. Is that one of those hence, lawyer words? That's right. <laughs> hence? Well, you know, <laughs> it's, hence, therefore, and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> You're starting to sound like a legal tablet. That's right. E pluribus unum. <laughs> All right, but so, the, so uh, I, we had an Irish community here. Uh, people very who large. went to the Civil War because they were hired to go to the Civil War fooled. That's right. From they, Ireland, they were fooled, right? They, they would come over the boats and then they were paid bounties yeah. to go serve with the Union Army. And, um, and actually, if you were rich, you could hire someone, and usually it was an Irishman or German, to take your place in the military. Yeah, well they couldn't do that when they drafted me, how come? Well, you know, they, they wanted <laughs> you. <laughs> Warts and all, they wanted you there. <laughs> <laughs> but the Irish ran the city for a long time, and of course, police and firemen are mostly Irish in our city. That was it. that was the one industry that they could get in. Fire departments and police departments were one area that the Irish could get in. Most of the other areas they could not. I mean, the Irish need not apply was you know a sign that you would see in just about really? everything. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was very tough, and in fact, uh, the draft riots uh, in New York that occur in 1863, where the Irish. Re revolting against the fact that they were the ones that were doing all the fighting. Uh, you know, it's a rich man's war, poor man's fight. And that there were um, black Americans that were getting jobs in New York that were taking them away from the Irish because they were taking less wages. So the draft riots came out and uh, that was all down actually in this area and a little further south of here. And it was horrible. And they, they uh, you know, many men killed. They had to call the army up from Gettysburg just getting done with the fights in Gettysburg to come here and uh, bring peace back to New York City. Wow, well that's why we have uh, great sports here. We took all our aggressions out on uh, basketball, and <laughs> I think. And, and then Which, by the way, is, is a field that black folks have gotten into I heard in great that. numbers. Is that true? Yes. And not so many Irish. <laughs> Now, Melody, you yes, have a catering yes. service, do you? I do, in uh, Morristown, New Jersey, Yay. and Sherman Oaks, California. Oh, yeah, in both places. Yes, huh? the main event by Melody. And um, I also teach children to cook healthy and green. One of my businesses is Kids Green Kitchen. And in turn, these children are teaching their parents to cook, so that's a good thing. Well, you're great. Every time we've had a holiday, you've come around with uh, something gigantic. I have. Thanksgiving's been our biggest for about the last 22 years. Yeah, you kept bringing us these turkeys. That's right. And, <laughs> and I, I, I love the idea that uh, you know how to cook seagull. Well, you know, in this neighborhood, you need to. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> what, what the advantage of seagull is it's already salted. That's right. I've had bagel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a lot of fun with you. Thank, Thank you. you for the food tonight. You're My great. pleasure. Should we want to plug the bread again? This <laughs> Rubschlager or whatever well, it's called? Well, this is a Rubschlager Reuben with Rubschlager cocktail rye with um, corned beef and Swiss cheese. Then this is a um, apple Irish cake. And these are my brownies that go to the Academy Awards every year. They're brownie melodies, and they're very fudgy. And, of course, soda bread. And my Irish stew that I put... Um, lamb? 
No, I don't. That has beef in it, but I also use um, Guinness in my um, oh, yum see. stew. Oh, I wonder what, no, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Yeah. The high school kids from Don Bosco were eating that. Like, <laughs> you no, know, but it cooks, it, it cooks down. You don't so even these are taste. Academy Award brownies. They huh? are, they are. They're called brownie melodies. Yeah. Thank well, you. Well, uh, apparently this year there was a, a, a big feeding afterwards that some of the hosts of the show did not attend. But your brownies are great. You're, you're great. You're, you're always you. fun to have around. Thank, Thank you, Melody. Thank you, Joey. We go back a long time. I know. It's Thank wonderful. You. You're Thank great. You. You're great. Thank you. Thank you. And Albert Wunsch and yes. also Rick Younger, who lusts after my job. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I have my own show. <laughs> the Rick, Rick Younger, Younger show. show. I know. April 17th at the Parkside Lounge. So Joey's going to be my special guest that night. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to come there and I'm He's going to take over. I'm going to sing. Please do. Oh, please. <laughs> please <don't. laughs> Just let me know what you want to sing. I have the band ready. Thanks. We'll have another, another Reynolds rap right now by saying goodnight to everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. And you know what I say. Let a smile be your umbrella. What is it? But and don't get a mouthful of rain. Let a smile be your umbrella, but don't get a mouthful, mouthful of rain. rain. Yes. All right. Be right back. To there are 13,000 cabs in New York City, but there's only one that pays you. Climb into the cash cab and I will quiz you all the way to your destination. As the meter clicks, the questions get harder and the stakes get higher. If you get stumped, you can shout out for help on the phone or off the street. But be careful, because in this rig, it's three strikes and you're out. So what do you say? You in? Child, you I, I came through school. Stop it. Everything. Oh, I got it. Okay. This is his baby. This is his baby. We are going to do what we're supposed to be doing it in the beginning. Go right behind that. Right now. When it comes to 23 month old Zaire, M. Dot, you are the father. When Alexis was six months pregnant, her husband left her for another woman. And now denies he's the father of her newborn baby. Hey, no! Alexis is jealous of find the real dad and get out of our lives. Get him! Get him! Get him! She wishes he wasn't the dad, but will her wish actually come true? Tyler! Attention, Medicare and insurance beneficiaries. Do health issues limit your mobility? Is it difficult to get to the bathroom on your own? Do you feel like a bother to others due to your lack of mobility? Have you fallen in the past 12 months? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you may qualify for a new power chair at little to no cost to you. Hi, I'm Doug Harrison. If you're living with limited mobility, call the scooter store today. We're experts at getting you the power chair or scooter you need. I promise no other company will work harder to make you mobile or do more to ensure your total satisfaction. Because making you mobile is our mission. We'll work with your doctor, Medicare, and your private insurance. So don't wait any longer. Call the Scooter Store today. Call for your free mobility consultation and free lighted magnifier right now. Call 1-800-923-2900 and receive this free lighted magnifier. Tonight, the four remaining couples will be put to the ultimate test. It's makeover week! It's kind of scary. 42! Woo! It's like Dumb and Dumber right here. The t-shirt makes you look like the Michelin Man. Huh. Shedding for the wedding. Tonight at 9 on The CW. Picks 11. If you've been hurt in a car accident, a fall, or any kind of accident, you may be entitled to money. Get the money you deserve for your injuries. Call the Lawyers Group. Call 1-800-677-2020. The call is free. The advice is free. Call 1-800-677-2020. If you've been hurt in any kind of accident,